Newton wasn't proven and Einstein replaced Newton. That is what this video is dealing with. And what I'm asking, and maybe someone can answer my question, is this Subur guy really this stupid or is he just ignorant and deceptive? Hi guys, SC Dawa has graced us with another silly edition of Dawa, desperately trying to spread the Islam virus. I skipped the join us invitation to their God message celebrations in the last video since you can't join due to the strict censorship to protect their scared little brains from any kind of challenges. And it's so silly, nobody should be forced to listen to this nonsense anyway. So I've decided to take a closer look at two of their later oeuvres. The Muslim apologist known only as Subur is at the center of both these videos, which were taken more recently in Speaker's Corner in London. I'll quickly do both videos back to back to show you what I'm talking about. And it's not a problem either, just in case you are hoping, no, there's nothing new or profound from them. So it's no biggie, I'll manage. Now in the video back at Speaker's Corner, we get Subur at his finest. Because a liberal condoned the Iraq war and the Iraq war was bad, liberalism is bad. And atheism too, since he was also an atheist. So a liberal society without gods can go to war as it pleases. A liberal society can do preemptive war. There you go, that's his logical conclusion. <clears throat> so like me saying all Muslims are terrorists and have small penises or whatever. He actually states that liberalism and not believing gods exist are somehow linked. Liberalism today is based upon an atheistic worldview. Liberalism is linked to atheism. How exactly are they linked? Well, he doesn't say. Well, to me, liberalism is about freedoms, freedom from religion, from royalty, from encrusted constraints on gender, sex and marriage, freedom of expression and equality for every human being before law and state. Now, Subur admits a Muslim can't be a liberal since none of these values are part of Islam. I don't believe it's possible to be a Muslim and a liberal. I think it's impossible. Well, this is honest enough. And I don't think I need to reiterate each and every bad idea in Islam to verify this. He claims evolution is somehow embedded and breeds racism. Really? Come on, this is complete and utter bullshit. Squared. This is crazy. He says Muslims can't revise the Quran when this has happened literally and psychologically. Yet he describes his highly simplistic view of non-Muslims as drinking and womanizing, and then says that is not Islam and not a Muslim. And I wish I could ask him what exactly a Muslim is and what percentage of the billion plus Muslims fall under his definition. Now, his take is a thousand years ago, people developed behavioral patterns for that society and cultural region. And we should adhere to those. Well, not really. We can use cars, phones, medicines, but, but all the rest. Well, actually not really. I doubt he would marry off his six-year-old daughter to a 50-year-old man. There are thousands of things he would not do, but claims we all should. Now, what do we call someone who proclaims one thing and does another? Uh, exactly. If I asked him, whether beating your wife should be practiced today, he will say the Quran does not say you can beat your wife, thereby modifying and updating the Quran. Whoops, hmm. that's what he just said you can't do. So I don't know what, what his story is. He next claims the only way to reform Islam is to apply liberalism. But when you say Islam needs to be reformed, it means reformed according to something else. And what is that something else? It's liberalism. Uh, I doubt he actually knows what that is. And no, it is not. All you need to do, come on, let's be realistic. All you need to do is remove the barbaric commands that clash with human rights. The political side of Islam. So he is building and subsequently arguing a claim that nobody is making. 
deflecting from the barbaric Sharia. But he made liberalism look bad and evil and now has to keep mentioning it, whether it makes sense or not. You simply have to say, well, liberalism allows it. Because liberal societies did have capital punishment. In fact, liberal societies were even committing genocide. After five minutes, his next rather silly claim is that liberalism or atheism, well, atheism, I don't know what that actually is, must, must be true. Prove to us liberalism is true. How can a book, a concept or an ideology be true? A statement or claim can be true, but not an ideology. It can be practical, useful, beneficial, benevolent, a whole host of other things. But true, as in correct, the same goes for Islam or Christianity and my bicycle, which also can't be true. Also, not believing gods exist can't be a worldview. A worldview is something like a, like a filter where I make everything I observe or do pass through it before deciding something. I don't check every time I sit down to eat or make a speech or whatever with my not believing gods exists. <laughs> okay, a Muslim does. And it gets quite silly, as we all know. Now, in the video, yeah, it goes downhill further and further. We get totally ludicrous claims like all organized activities lead to violence. All human organized activities lead to violence. Excuse me, an orgy in a swinger club is organized and is the exact opposite. It comes from atheism and leads to atheism. Although, funnily enough, the liberals in the past, they went atheists. Liberalism comes from atheism, but liberals were theists. What are you talking about? All states have warfare. Is he drunk or what? Come on. Fornication is known as sex. So when you get fornication, God sends down diseases that their forefathers have never heard of. And is the most peaceful, satisfying, fulfilling, whatever activity there is. Is there anything better than an orgasm? Well, maybe two of them. But in, in this guy's mind, sex is bad and needs to be tarnished somehow. So he associates this with nihilism where values are baseless, leading to extreme pessimism, negating existence itself, which is like atheism, right? <laughs> what a simple... <laughs> atheism leads to nihilism. Come on, he's a, he's a member of the worst God cult we have on this planet in this day and age, denying women human rights, making them into human incubators, putting black layers and layers of cloth over them until they look like what we use as bin bags, and then oppress them in any way possible. Because if there is no God, then there is no grounding for human rights. And he talks about human rights? We have Muslim-majority countries where women are flogged in public, are beheaded in public, are stoned to death in public. And this barbarian talks about human rights? Islam prohibits other religions and openly claims it will dominate them. It prohibits friendships with fans of other gods. And he talks about human rights? Islam makes people kill people only due to their sexual orientation. And this backward human monster talks about human rights? Muslims in the kingdom of Saudi Arabia, they label me as terrorist only because I don't believe their silly claims. And if I say this in public, I go to jail and get flogged in public. And this fool talks about human rights i've dealt with him when he talked about something he knows nothing about which is human evolution but this was the first time i heard him talk about something else where he lacks knowledge and i lost the tiny bit of sympathy i had for his at least trying to educate himself now here he failed miserably and demonstrated why Islam does not fit into the 21st century and is collapsing. Not only do you need a foundation for human rights, 
you also need the idea of pain and pleasure. You and fool. let me tell you, he had a very accommodating, nice, gentle interlocutor. And he talks about him reading the Quran with this guy and invites his interlocutor to join him. I've got, th <laughs> I've got three questions. Why doesn't he make this an open invitation the way we do it on the Gin and Tonic Show? To show everybody what the Quran is about. To show people what happens when you read the Quran. Two, why are Islam apologists so scared and censor anyone who can challenge their ideas? Because as soon as you try and join a stream with them, they cut you off because they're so scared. And three, why? And this is quite interesting. Why is he desperately trying to get personal data when we know that too many Muslims get people killed, fired, or simply harassed if they don't like them anymore? And he's trying to tell the guy, well, give me your telephone number. Where's your WhatsApp? What's the, what's the, where's your number? Where's your everything? And the guy is, you know, quite rightly careful, says, whoa, 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 whoa. I'll find you. Just tell me where you are. I'll find you. Anyway, this whole video is just a pathetic attempt at trying to uplevel Islam using a misunderstood political ideology. And that's all there is. Now, in the next video, in Sabor versus Agnostic with a heated discussion, we have this the same Sabor again making a fool of himself. This time around, he starts off by making a mess of science, the scientific methods, scientific documentation. Now, in my um, video from a couple of days ago, where I commented on the knowledge of when it comes to science, I think I've already made this clear. But here, it gets it, it gets worse because he claims I, 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 I don't know how to, I'm speechless, right? I do not know how to express my absolute disbelief that somebody in the 21st century can be this ignorant and so uneducated because he claims scientific findings are transmitted only via personal testimony. It's, it's un unbelievable how, how someone can be this, this ignorant and then still run his mouth. Has he never heard of experiments, data, information or peer review? Wow, come on, this is crazy. And in, in my video, and I, I, th I, think I, I think he is one of the people who watched it, in the video where I refute the Fitra claim, well, I made three, I think, by now, but I think this was one he saw, I show what makes up a scientific paper documenting an experiment, and none is about testimony, because it was about this, this Petrovich making experiments and Barrett, uh, Justin Barrett making experiments, and they didn't. And I showed them what a real scientific paper looks like, which totally provides the evidence that they need that the Fitra claim is false. It does not exist. And there I also showed what philosophy does and does not do, something the silly apologists simply can't understand. He then bastardizes al Haytham. And this was a brilliant guy who lived a thousand years ago. A man did not invent the scientific method. <laughs> Many before have took this approach, and all he did is demand evidence through experimentation. Something the Subur guy still doesn't understand a thousand years later. This Alhatham, he wrote, the, the duty of the man who investigates the writings of scientists, if learning the truth is his goal, is to make himself an enemy of all that he reads and attack it from every side. He should also suspect himself as he performs his critical examination of it so that he may avoid falling into either prejudice or leniency. Now, this is brilliant stuff and incredibly useful for the development of the scientific method we know today. Now, if Al Haytham knew this a thousand years ago, how come some idiot like, like Subur doesn't know this today? Why doesn't he take exactly these words and apply them to his brain today? Come on. So it's useful for the development of the scientific method, but totally useless if it's used to source anything scientific to Muslims. So Sabur insists that science presupposes something he calls uniformity of nature, which it does not. He can't grasp that a microscope, a magnifying glass and a telescope 
Each have their uses and neither replace or contradict one another when it comes to looking at stuff. Just as a, a plank length, a centimeter or a light year. They're all measurements of distance and they all have the individual uses and one does not replace the other. But it would be, you know, a bit useless trying to represent the length of a of a keyboard or something using, you know, the measure of the unit of light years. That's stupid. So just because I, he just wants there to be uniformity because it fits in with his God claim. And even uh, it doesn't make it true. It's just wishful thinking, not more. But he will claim it again and again. He does not understand that observing the universe at a quantum level is vastly different from observing the universe at a, at a galactic level. So speaking of uniformity is not only exaggerated, but simply wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, some laws we found, measured and provided with a unit, and these are universal, as far as we know. But most are not, and some we don't even know about. And we, as humans, are still learning. Instead of helping and contributing, people like Subua want to halt this and go back, I don't know, 1400 years or so, and remain stagnant. Okay, so he claims that everything is either due to chance, necessity, or God. What about other possibilities, like inevitable or chaos or whatever? I'm sure there's more. Whether this is following the Christian Keith Ward or Aquinas doesn't really matter. What matters is that Subur did not come up with this and demonstrates a highly simplistic understanding. It gets a bit boring when all he can do is shout philosophy, philosophy. He doesn't understand it and he forgets applied science. I've said this millions of times. You can have 50 philosophers standing around a car discussing an oil change, but it takes a mechanic to actually change the oil. So at some stage, you need to stop planning and do the work. He makes... <laughs> he makes an interesting statement. Whether intended or not, I'm not going to speculate now. Because today, science requires evidence, okay, and the ability to make predictions, the falsifiability test. However, and this is the interesting point, some scientists have argued recently that an idea or theoretical model with explanatory capabilities should be taken as science without being falsifiable. Well, wow. okay, I'm I'm old school and I reject this notion. It's to me it's it's too idealistic. It it, it I don't think it's we're ready for this. I think we, we still need this. And come on, it it softens the hard facts and, and the requirements and everything in my eyes anyway. But this is still undecided and an open point being discussed. Now, so what brings up the philosophy of science and he does it over and over. But he demonstrates his ignorance because by definition it says in the philosophy of science a standard of evaluation of putatively scientific theories according to which a theory is genuine, genuinely scientific only if it is possible in principle to establish that it is false. Okay, that's what it says. But Sabor is so busy building a strawman and, and constantly harping on about philosophy which does have merits he doesn't notice this. So, don't get me wrong, philosophy is useful, but it's it's not applied science as such. Yes, you need the philosophy of science to understand science, but then the applied science no longer needs the philosophy of science once it has established itself. Now, his interlocutor points that out and reminds Subor that their discussion is actually about evidence of gods, which I believe Subo has simply failed to provide. And his lame reply is, The world is evidence. The world is evidence. Really? Uh, I can claim the world is evidence that gods don't exist, with the same identical level of confidence, accuracy and reliability. <laughs> God, this is not even childish anymore. That science, he proposes, developed as a tool to observe and explain the natural world, suddenly becomes the fallacy of equivocation. This is actually called the fallacy of equivocation. Man, this guy is thick. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay, example. Laws imply lawgivers, all right? There are laws in nature, therefore there must be a cosmic lawgiver. Or another one, noisy children are a real headache. An aspirin will make a headache go away. Therefore, an aspirin will make noisy children go away. All right, this is the example. This is a, a, a fallacy of equivocation because what you're doing is you have in, in one part, you have speaking for about like, like laws and then a different type of laws altogether, i.e. a key term or phrase in an argument is used in an ambiguous way with one meaning in one portion of the argument and then another meaning in another portion of the argument. All right, so <laughs> does it seem as though Sabu understands this? No, not one bit. What he is describing sounds more like begging the question. But ugh, who cares? It's irrelevant since he still is unable to provide evidence for his claims. And of course, it gets worse. <clears throat> Subo really should not be left unsupervised. The claim, <laughs> the claim is that science simplifies things, and this is substantiated using the example of a short equation. Science seeks to simplify the world. And e do you know what that's equals mc squared is that a simple equation? Yeah, and do you know that part of science which is known as Occam's razor, where you go for the simplest explanation? Savoir doesn't get it. And he calls this simple description of natural phenomena Occam's razor. Something completely different, which is <laughs> the equivocation fallacy, where the word simple is used in a different way and Savoir jumps to conclusions. Oh, this guy is embarrassing. And even more, the worst of the, the worstest, I'm unable to find words like I showed in the beginning. The amazing, willful ignorance and utter stupidity of this guy. Which means Newton wasn't proven and Einstein replaced Newton. And then Newton is elevated to a worldview, replaced by the Einstein worldview. Come on, this is simply too much to bear. Please stop. No, come on. How can the... I mean, the other guy keeps a straight face. I don't know how he does this. No, please, Muslims in general are not so dumb. Okay, so why doesn't someone stop this fool? He is making Islam look like a, a really backward running around the black rock cult that stones women to death without brains capable of understanding today's reality. Yet I know hundreds of Muslims personally, and they are jacked up and they're with it. They understand the world we live in and learn how to explain it. Why can't this Subwa guy learn? And why doesn't anyone stop him? It reminds me of the cops standing around their colleague, kneeling on a guy and killing him without anyone stepping in. It's sad. It's unbelievably sad. Sure, I can make fun of this, but actually it's, it's horrible. It's horrible that so many minds are wasted with this, with this ridiculous backward thing that they believe. It's, uh, it's terrible. Okay, will any one of us normal people be allowed into their live stream they are advertising constantly? Of course not. So, as we see again and again, Islam apologists have nothing. There is no intelligent or coherent argument, and when it comes to science, <laughs> they fail miserably. And this is the problem, they are too scared to even talk about it. They censor anyone trying to educate them. And they continue leading their lives following a highly ignorant God and his equally uneducated messenger. Thanks, guys. Oh, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want. Give me a thumbs down if you don't like this. But I'd really like to know why. Okay, see you next video. Bye-bye.